Sony Vegas. Hey, what's up? Robert here, coming at you with another Sony Vegas tutorial. And in this tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at using the trimmer window. So, this is the fourth episode of the Sony Vegas Getting Started series. In the last episode, we took a look at the Project Media window. So, we're going to move on right over on how to trim those clips for the timeline down here using the trimmer. So, to make some room, I'm going to go ahead and close the master bus track here and drag this over. But right offhand, I want you to notice this More Buttons button down here. When we click that, we have all these different buttons that are hidden. So, therefore, we can drag this out to reveal all those buttons just like that. So, now we're going to start off by adding clips to the trimmer itself. We can do that by clicking and dragging the clip right clicking the clip choose open and trimmer or even double clicking the clip now now wait a minute double clicking made the clips go into the timeline if you prefer for all the clips by default to go into the trimmer if you even use the double clicking method you can allow Vegas to make the clips go into the trimmer automatically just by setting up an option in the preferences so if we go to the options Preferences under the general tab we can come down here and choose double click on media file loads into trimmer instead of tracks Having a little trouble reading there click ok and when you double click the clip Boom it opens in the trimmer and it might look like this by default but That's okay you can always click and drag this up if you want to see the audio a little better I'm going to go ahead and delete these pink flowers down here it's kind of bothering me But uh, we'll have them up here actually I'm going to choose a better clip for this uh, let's get this clip of my dog eating. So here we have the food going in, which is a lot better than the food going out. Uh, shamefully, I do have the video of the food going out, but uh, we, we're not going to go into that today. Uh, so here we have the eating dog, and we want to take a portion of this clip and add it to our timeline. So a lot of people may make their adjustments in the timeline. To be honest, I used it most of the time, but on certain occasions, I do use the trimmer, especially when your timeline or your project down here looks like the streets of New York. You might want to use the trimmer because it's really busy down here and crowded. The trimmer sometimes is a lot easier to work with. Okay, so we have a position here. We can use the left and right arrows on our keyboard to move frame by frame. We can zoom in here and see where we want to, you know, set the end point at. As you can see, I can click and drag to make the selection, or I can click a certain point, hit I on the keyboard to set the end point, move forward a few frames, can hit O on the keyboard to set the out point, and there's our selection. So we took care of a few buttons down here. These buttons right here go to the previous frame and go to the next frame, as well as these buttons over here. This sets the in point and sets the out point. And the buttons over here to the left, we're pretty familiar with already. They're the typical play and stop buttons. We also have the loop button, just in case you have a little funny that you want to, you know, play over and over again. Look at that. Sometimes you need to amuse yourself when you're editing. So let's drag this back out. Yeah, that'll that'll work. That'll work. That's like swallowing a fish. Look at that. Okay, so back on track. Now that we have our selection, we want to add this to our timeline down here. So let's act like we're making a feature film. We have clips here together, um, like that. Okay, feature film starring the leaf, the dead leaf or plant, uh, fake flowers, and a sandbox. It sounds real interesting. I think. Morgan Freeman is starring in it. Anyway, I want to add her chewing right here where these flowers are. So how am I going to do that? With this selection selected, I can point the cursor in the right direction. Now it's uh, it's the uh, cursor here on the timeline. It's not an actual cursor, okay? You know, that'll be a little scary. But we have these two buttons right here where we can add the media after the cursor and add the media before the cursor. So I want the media to be before the cursor. Let's click that and see what happens. Okay, so what it did was it cut out that portion of the flower video and added the dog chewing. So we go from beautiful flowers, fake flowers, and then chewing, and then back to flowers. Okay, that makes perfect sense. I'm starting to get emotional. 
But when we delete this, it leaves a gap in our video. So what if we didn't want that adjustment to be made? We deleted it, now we have a gap. So let's undo everything. We can actually come in here and turn off the enabled timeline overwrite. We'll turn that off. So then when we add the media before the cursor, it won't overwrite the timeline. It'll just be on top of the clip. We can also add it uh, after the cursor, just like that. But that's that's too much. That's too much for the video. So we covered all these buttons here. We covered the enable timeline overwrite. We covered the add media from cursor. Now we have this button right here. Create subclip. What is that? Well, with our selection selected, what if I wanted to create an entire clip out of this? Well, I can click create subclip, enter the name, misspelled it, it's okay, we know she's eating. And you have an option to reverse this clip. If you click that, the, the clip will be in reverse, which you could do if you need the clip to be in reverse, whatever you need. Click OK. And now if we go down here, we have a new clip. These aren't sorted again, they're at the top. So eating clip is right here. We can click and drag this and that's an entire clip all on its own. Okay, so that's our sub clip. So we can right click this, open in the trimmer, now what if we made a mistake? What if we wanted to add a different portion or even more of the beginning, more of the end? If I just stretch this clip out, it'll just repeat over and over again. I want it to stretch out. So what we can do is actually right click this in the trimmer and go to select parent media. This is going to open the original video with our selection already selected. And then I can increase this. That was kind of fun. And then create another subclip. Hopefully uh, spelling it outright this time. And here we have the eating clip, the new subclip. Just a lot better. Alrighty, so we have this gap here. And this is where I want to add her eating. But I want to actually fit this entire selection here into that gap. So this is like fitting your fist inside the opening of a water bottle. This is what we're going to do. We have the selection made down here where we want this clip to go. We have the selection up here. So we're going to come down here and click this button right here called fit to fill. When we click that, it's going to speed up or slow down the clip in order to fit that gap or selection. So if we play, we got the fake flowers going on. Then we got the dog eating in high speed so that the clip would fit in there and then we got the sand. Now you can use that only on certain occasions. Some occasions come by where you really need to use that, but uh, you know, it's not always necessary to use that. You can just, you know, shorten the selection and make the clip the duration that you need it to be so it's a normal speed. Cause you know, we don't want normal speed mixed in with high speed and slow speed unless it's some kind of music video or high action sequence. Okay, so we covered the sub clips. We covered this fit to fill button. Now we have the markers. Now the markers are mainly used if you need to remember a position of the clip. You know, this part is the funny part. So we can select a clip here, insert a region, call it funny clip. And there we have the region. We can click the little save button to save the markers and it'll actually save the marker to that file. If I bring that down to the timeline, this is actually the original clip. So I need to bring this down to the timeline and you can see the markers are set up where the funny part of the clip is. We can't adjust the markers here. We'd have to reopen it up in the trimmer to adjust the markers or to delete them. So there's the markers. Now, sometimes you want to make a better selection of the clips. Maybe you want to show the video thumbnails. Well, we can do that by right clicking, choose show video frames. And now we have the video frames showing here along with the audio. So, you know, if we zoom in real close, We'll see each frame so we kind of know where we're where we need to select things. You can hit control shift up to make the video portion bigger or control shift down to make the audio portion bigger. Control shift up to make it neutral. You can also do that by right clicking uh, video height larger, audio height larger or video and audio equal height. Sometimes certain situations come along where you only need the video of the clip. When I select it, it selects both the audio and the video. So I can hit tab to only select the video, drag that into the timeline. I can come back to the timeline, hit tab again, you know, only select the audio or hit tab again to select both. 
You can do that also by right clicking, select audio and video only. And of course, if I have the selection and I want to zoom directly into the selection, I can always right click and zoom into the selection just like that. All kinds of things you can do here. If I don't like this preview window here and I want this to preview in the main preview window, I can right click, turn off, show video monitor and see everything here without the preview window and it'll show up over here in the main preview window. So if I edit everything in the trimmer, it shows up here. Now if I come down here to the timeline, it'll show the timeline events and then back to the trimmer, it'll show the trimmer events. So I can right click, show video monitor and that's useful if you have a certain external monitor set up for the video. You can click this to set the main preview window on an external monitor. You can also set the trimmer window on an external monitor if you click that. It gets bigger, you can click escape to escape that. So we covered a lot of things down here. Let's take a look at what's up here. This right here is called our history. Everything that we added to the trimmer will be recorded up here. So let me add another clip here. And if I go to the history, I can go back to this clip, I can go back to this clip, etc. If I don't want these pink flowers here anymore, I can click the X right here, remove that pink flower from the history. I can sort the history in alphabetical order by clicking this button right here. Sort it, you can see eating, uh, clip 17, clip 26. I can hold down control while clicking the sort button and it'll sort it backwards, 26, 17, just like that. So I like to be alphabetically ordered. If you want to remove everything from the trimmer, you can click the lightning bolt and just shock everything out of there and everything's gone from the trimmer. So let's say you have the star of the moment thumbnail that you need to get. You need to capture that thumbnail. It's so important for you to use this thumbnail. Just as you can in the preview window, you can save a snapshot. Just right click, copy the snapshot to clipboard if you're going to import into Photoshop, create a thumbnail, or you can save the snapshot to a file and just upload it wherever you need to that way. And when you save the snapshot to a file, it'll appear in your project media window and then you can bring that down into Vegas if you want and you have a nice little snapshot. One last thing, if you have a bunch of audio that maybe sounds bad, maybe has clicking in it, maybe you want to speed it up, make it sound like a chipmunk or something, you can actually open the audio in your favorite audio editor that you set up in the preferences. So if you right click the audio, you can choose open an audio editor and it'll open the audio editor that you set up under options preferences, audio tab, preferred audio editor. So whatever you choose here, that's what it'll open up in. And then when you're done editing, it should bring it back into Vegas automatically for you. Well, that's just about it for this episode of Sony Vegas Getting Started series using the trimmer. If you have any questions, be sure to ask over at robertsproductions.net. You can also talk to me on Twitter at robsproductions. We have a Facebook. All the links are in the description below. Hopefully these are helping you out in learning about what Vegas has to offer. So with that said, I'm Robert. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. Follow at Rob's Productions on Twitter and like us on Facebook.